version of our company profiles. This time we're going to feature Microvast, a vertically integrated uh, battery company, one of which Alex and I have talked a lot about. Alex, I know you're enthusiastic to, to dive in head first. Where do you want to begin? Well, first off, Microvast is, uh, is highly accredited. They've been doing this for a very long time. They're not just a random startup company. So they were founded in 2006. They're headqu headquartered in Texas, but they're their mainstay factory in R and D is in China, so to to obviously bring that all together is that they're one of the fastest growing leaders in in batteries, fast charging batteries, and they manufacture it themselves and they 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 pride themselves on ultra fast charging, high density, long life batteries, battery systems for not only. Um, electric vehicle uh, vehicles from the likes of, obviously they, they focus on industrial and commercial vehicles um, as, as specifically in the likes of construction, but also they do like consumer products and, and uh, like phones, computers, you name it, they're working on those types of products. So, and even a uh, data, you know, storage solution centers, you know, all this data that the world is collecting, they need more efficient ways of storing it. You know, they're going to tackle that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, everything, yeah, so, everything requires a battery these days. Yeah, and they're taking advantage of that situation. So they have manuf manufacturing locations in China, Germany, London, the powertrain, and Clark just recently Clarksville, Tennessee, which is currently in progress to support their, their uh, partnership and contract with Oshkosh to re-electrify United States Postal Service. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah. Yep. So to add on to the the exact capabilities. When it comes to a battery company, we've seen this with Romeo, we've seen this with QuantumScape, we've seen this with many other companies uh, that have gone through uh, just recently DCRC for solid power. They're doing solid state batteries. When it comes to value of a company, it comes to capacity and current abilities to create units. Just as November 24th of 2020, they have had the, cap the capacity of building 80,000 units of lithium batteries in a single day, which is phenomenal. I think yeah. that's, that's huge. And they're still expanding. Um, in 2021, their projected for revenue was around $230 million, just solid. It's a, it's light years ahead of many others. And then the compound annual growth rate between 2020 to 2025 is projected to for 87.6% of annual growth. That's insane. Wow. Yeah, that is insane. And you're absolutely right. You know, there's really no other battery manufacturer out there that parallels the progress that this company makes, or even to, quite frankly, the revenue. Um, even QuantumScape, which we all saw go up to $132, and then has recently come down to what, like 30? It's actually below 30 right now. It's around. It's pushing around 26 to 27. But it, it's. I think that that situation, great for people that were able to make profits. Sure. But it, but I hope that people used it as a learning experience because. When it comes down to looking at a company, I get the hype for the technology. I get the hype for people that are biking, backing it. But when it comes down to it, the value of a company, the value of an investment comes down to the product itself. And are they actually producing it? Do they have the capacity to produce it in mass quantities? And how does it perform? And that's exactly what Microvest does. They're not phenomenal in marketing right now. They're focusing on their, their product itself. And... I think that it's going to be a great investment down, down the road, but, and it's reflected with the likes of the partnerships. Um, like they have partnered with Oshkosh, which is big for me. Uh, yep. BMW, Porsche Motorsport, uh, SEIC, Safra, Fiat, yep. and then uh, recently uh, Gaussen. Yeah. Well, and on top of that too. Um, so the United States has its consortium of, um, companies, particularly it, this was founded by GM and Ford, um, whereas they realized, hey, let's collude together um, to figure out what's needed to, to meet the short-term needs and the long-term needs of the auto industry mm -hmm. in energy saving and just the development of the whole EV space. And sure enough, Microvast got a $1 million assessment program um, contract to build out that assessment, uh, which were really kind of dictate the future of EV and the United States. So it's incredibly validating. Um, 
And that's, you know, quite frankly, in my mind, a great way to start, you know, get your foot in the door with two large, you know, uh, manufacturers. We also know, too, that Ford uh, partnered with Google to work on the electrification of their whole, you know, family of cars, and that uh, Microvest has been gently tapped to help with that as well. So I think this is just the very beginning of some amazing strategic, you know, partnerships here domestically, and, um, and then the Oshkosh deal, like you said, oh. like it was valued around like six to $7 billion to retrofit all of the U.S. Postal Service's vehicles uh, to elect for electrification. And so for yeah. Mike, Mike Ravaz to get that too, um, I mean, these type of contracts are, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. No, right? to be connected to so many companies that are, that are highly accredited and they have their own capacity to mass produce, they're not like some kind of startup company that they're partnering with, but Oshkosh, that was a big highlight for Microvast to be able to not only have them as a strategic investor into their pipe, which they are in THCB, they have $25 million uh, investment into their company, which clearly they believe that Microvast is a credited company. They're going to grow substantially, but to have them hand in hand to be able to use their technology to fulfill that 10 year contract for 165,000 vehicles to replace the whole United States Postal Service fleet. That's incredible in my eyes. And I think that that's gonna just not only accredit Oshkosh, but also Microvest as a whole. So to work with them, to work with the fact of kind of working with association that has a subsidi like our subsidi subsidiary or an association with Ford and GM, to work with developing a low cost, fast charge battery for electric vehicle applications. I think that that's huge. But in the same manner, they've already really created that. They have a current battery that has the capability of charging, what is it, 20, 20 within being fully charged in 20 minutes or is it 10 minutes? I think it's like, yeah, 10 to 15, ridiculously fast. One other thing that's important to note is just batteries in general have a lifetime or lifespan per se, and that inevitably you'll lose voltage over time. One mm -hmm. thing that's unique about Micro, Microvest Star product is that you could charge it 10,000 10, plus times and be able to still retain 90% of that capacity, which is kind of unheard of. Mm -hmm. The other thing too that they've really been hyper-focused on is this new solid state um, lithium battery, right? That they're projecting to be able to, you know, um, get more dense, or battery density, storing more energy in a smaller place by like five times their current product which is remarkable considering just how much batteries dictate things like our cell phone. The reason that this is not a, you know, the size of a credit card or the width of it is because of the battery density. So once they're able to make a commercially viable um, battery that's um, able to produce the, the, the great technical spec that it has, but also this battery density, it's going to be a game changer. And quite frankly, it's not too far out of the future. No, because number one, even though that they haven't really released that much data about that about the upcoming products from that solid state battery batteries for consumer products as well as potential EVs, it's you have to look at the overall infrastructure of the company. Look at the R and D aspect and their sectors. It's phenomenal. It's one of the largest in the world for these types of uh, battery companies. So recently, in, uh, in an earnings call and an investor presentation. Their head chemist, uh, head engineer, she spoke about the revolutionary products that were coming. And they, she talked about solid state batteries, which is huge in my eyes. I think that's very big in the future. They have lithium metal battery, which has high temperature cells to be able to take advantage and be able to be able to work at high temperatures. Then from the, that, that way, it could be utilized for high performance vehicles, like sports car applications applications like those types of products that they're talking about they're coming out from solid state battery lithium metal which deals with high temperature cells that's huge and no other company is doing that that i'm seeing right now and they were already being used by formula e um not the number not, not the top series but like the sub series so it's it's still a growing company that's being like the technology is already being utilized in a major variety of ways well, and their infrastructure, too, is growing quickly. 
So how they quantify it, their output is by gigawatts. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2020, they're producing around three gigawatts. So it's three billion hours worth. Uh, but they're planning to ramp that up to 20, in 2025 to 11 gigawatts from three, which is a disgusting number. And again, no other company parallels that level of uh, and just internal capabilities and output. Um, wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> so they also have a string of patents that's kind of unparalleled. I think it's like 400 plus. I think Microvast has 100. Um, they're just so well positioned. And obviously, like you said, they've been around since 20, uh, 2006. So yep. uh, they're not just new players. These guys are here to stay. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to tackle you know, consumer electronics, data solution centers. They're already in commercial vehicles. There's like 28,000 of these batteries on the road already. You were talking about double-decker buses. Um, mm -hmm. They're doing construction equipment already. Um, and then obviously with the consumer electrics, um, that's really exciting, right? Because everyone in the world... I mean, even in third world nations, people have smartphones these days. You know, there's this giant effort to get people connected and batteries just play such a critical role in that. So while it remains speculative on, you know, what the outlook looks like for a microvast, you have to think that there'll be a player in some regard. There's, there's not a matter of if they're a player, they are a player. And the plan, like you said, I didn't know about that, that they're going to be expanding their capacity to 11. To 11. Yeah, 11 gigabytes by 2025. That's that's insane. So you're seeing companies right now being priced at like 25 X, 30 X, 90 X. I think that current, look at the current valuation of the company and kind of reflecting on the pipe. The pipe isn't really even that, that large. It's not going to provide that much dilution in the valuation of the company. I think yeah. that right now it's trading at or below 12 bucks where Which is like robbing the bank and getting away with it. Yeah, the definitive agreement upon itself, the the, the stock ref, like the stock market reaction to it went all the way up to twenty five bucks. So what you're market. talking about is, I don't know if we covered this. This is a SPAC merger deal uh, between Microvast, the battery company, and then the SPAC company itself, Tuscan Holdings. Mm -hmm. The ticker is THCB, and that mm -hmm. that deal itself, I think, was valued at what three billion dollars, based on Around, the ten dollar initial price. Yeah, approximately three billion dollars, and that was before any of this news was occurring like the the oshkosh deal came in and that should increase the value upon itself but to add add to this is the fact that there's a big big the big reason why the major reason why there's a pull there was a, such a pullback from 25 to now is the what's going on with the management team they there's it's not just the management team itself it's also the investors the the management team's obviously had to deal with some internal issues with the company, but also in the same manner had to deal with some shareholders that they sold and forgot that they had a responsibility as a shareholder, especially when I'm with a reverse merger, your, your responsibility as a shareholder is to vote. You have to vote to make sure the business com com combination occurs. And if you do not vote, the merger won't happen. So they had to do multiple expand, uh, uh, extensions to make this happen because retail investors or shareholders weren't living up to their responsibilities. Yep. So they had to do this. And in the same manner, I don't think a lot of um, inexperienced traders or investors don't understand that there's like, this isn't just the management team. So they're questioning the management team. They're, they're questioning the overall internal um, processes and leadership. So they're waiting until the merger is officially approved to come in. Oh, and absolutely. I think that that's just a lot of investors are just sitting at and waiting for the official approval for this one to run. That's that's my my belief. Well, I think to layer on top of that too, we saw in early February it's, it reached its ATH, which you said was around twenty three twenty four bucks, which would give it just under seven billion dollar valuation, and that's after you, you know, if you deduct the seven hundred and seventy million in post deal cash, and then you account for I think they have one hundred and seventy million in existing debt. So the implied value there was just over six billion dollars, which is frothy on paper because that's about a 27x multiple. Mm -hmm. But I think it's actually more reasonable than one might think, and it's primarily because they already have revenue, which they expected, like you said, 230 million in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that people are forgetting is that you know they have projected you know 
sales of 2.3 billion by 2030. Um, oh no, no, by 2025, 2.3 billion and uh, 6.8 billion by 2030. The other thing too that people forget is that they already have about a billion and a half dollars in contracted revenue between now and 2027, uh, which is remarkable. And so if you, you account for all of that, I think you know it's not as frothy as you might think. And like you said, at $12 right now, um, it's a steal. So there's plenty of upside here. You just have to be, this will obviously reward the long-term investor, right? Because those yeah, long-term prospects are just excellent. Yeah, this can be utilized in a lot of ways. You can be a long-term investor, but in the same manner, you can do it. You can utilize it as a swing play because this this uh, current situation, there's there's such a low amount of float that small amount of of uh, volume can make this thing move. So yeah. that's why like people waiting, they're like, I need to I need to get in because like ten thousand shares can make this move like ten cents, and it's just you have to wait until the the approval and then you're going to see rampant increase of volume overall but there's a there's not only just myself and dana there's plenty of other people on in fintwit across the whole world that know that this company is highly credible they're just wanting approval and once that's approved it's going to fly because people know that it's going to it's going to demand a higher valuation than what was currently uh in this deal because of the technology and the current uh findings that we will that will be occurring in the future so correct me if I'm wrong, Alex, the proxy vote date is July 16th, right? July 16th. All right. So I think we should see a lot of activity leading up to that. And then mm -hmm. I think you make a very valid point. A lot will be riding on whether or not that gets approved. We expect it to. And then I think it's safe to assume that those big institutional investors that were looking at QuantumScape and all these other EV battery companies, they're going to see this as a sign of validation that mm -hmm. it's ready to go to market and who wouldn't want to pile on, um, especially at its current price. So absolutely. It's a steal, but, uh, I think that's everything that we've covered. And I want to say again, thank you guys so much for jumping on. We really appreciate you guys for not only viewing our video, but as well as supporting us, uh, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify or Apple or Google, we appreciate you so much. So make sure to leave a like comment, any questions that you guys do have. We look forward to seeing you guys next time.